Hey everybody, this week Apple made available in public beta the new operating systems that it's going to be launching this fall. So we got macOS Catalina, iOS 13, tvOS 13, and iPadOS 13. I think the only one we didn't get was watchOS yet. So this public beta means that you could actually go and download an early version of these new operating system features today and try them out. But the question is, should you? And that's what we want to talk a little bit about today, since this is up there. Um, you know, a few weeks back, Apple had its Worldwide Developer Conference, which is always the time of year when it announces all the new features coming out for its operating systems for the fall. And so when those, those betas start coming out, that's a tempting time for people to say, hey, maybe I could put this on my device. So should you is the big question. And for most users, the answer is no. But let's kind of talk about why. What What is beta software, first of all? So beta software is software that's not ready for prime time. It's not ready for release. When software you know, hits that release ready state, it's usually called a golden master or a GM version. Um, but a beta software is, you know, the, the developer has got uh, something that's usable and workable that they want people to test out so that they can begin working out bugs and figuring out what, what isn't working, what needs to be fixed. Um, beta time is also a time, specifically in this case, where Apple wants developers to start getting their apps ready. You know, it, it takes a long time in a lot of cases for uh, developers to, to update their apps with all the latest features. And so, you know, Apple hasn't put out a release date, but let's say the new software is coming out in late September, early October, sometime like that. Well, that gives developers a few months, um, which it seems like a lot of time if you're wanting the new software now, but again, development time can take a lot of time, and so it gives developers the time they need to get their apps ready for the new versions that are coming out, especially if there's a lot of new features. And we've got a lot of new feature updates this fall. So one of the things you'll notice, you know, whenever the uh, OS is ready for release, so that first day that you go and install the latest version of iOS, so think back last year to iOS 12, that day that it first came out, if you went and installed it that day, you probably had a lot of apps available for update in the App Store because developers were ready. They'd hit that release, they were ready same day as Apple or in the next few days right after that. Some developers don't have the luxury of the time and resources they need to do that, so not everybody has it ready, but that's typically the way it works. And so at the Worldwide Developers Conference uh, a few weeks ago, Apple announced, for example, iOS 13. That's gonna be a, a big thing uh, because, you know, the iOS is Apple's biggest uh, operating system in terms of number of, you, you know, installed devices that the operating system is installed on. And so, you know, those developers uh, are going to want to take advantage of new features like dark mode. It's not quite as simple. It sounds as simple as flipping a switch, but there are some design choices that developers need to be aware of and make to correspond with that. Um, you know, we've got, um, you know, new maps features. We got new, uh, uh, new features for uh, Animoji. We got a whole bunch of new things announced. For the iPad, we got a whole bunch of new features, a whole bunch of new multitasking features. Developers can now use have multi windows, something that they weren't able to do before. So there's a lot of stuff for developers to get their app ready. Okay, so this, so that's that's developers. So the second, you know, reason why Apple wants people to try out beta software is they want a large pool of users to be trying it out so that they can find bugs that maybe Apple wasn't aware of. Um, but also, you know, when you, it doesn't matter how much you know your product um, or how, it doesn't matter how much you think you know about how users are going to use it. There's going to be users who are going to want to use your product in ways that you would never have thought of. And so it's good for Apple to have a large group of people trying out the software early so that they can identify things that aren't working right that they wouldn't have even thought of or noticed. And sometimes it takes a large group of people to do that. And so that's certainly why Apple wants at least a number of people to be using the betas. But here's the main reason why you, you shouldn't do it, at least not yet. And that is that the early betas of these new operating systems, and I'm not talking about this year specifically necessarily, but just this is just something that's true of beta software in general that you should expect, especially in the early rounds of beta releases. It's going to be buggy. Things aren't going to work. You might have apps that you rely on that aren't going to work. Uh, you might have battery issues where the you know your device's battery is draining down a lot faster than it would normally. Um, you might have uh, you know system crashes. You know lots of little annoying things that won't work, and then you'll reboot the device and it will work. Those are the kind of things that you can expect to see in the early rounds of betas. And so you know part of it comes down to how much are you willing to endure that you know, until they get successive versions of the betas out, and you know, in the, in the weeks leading up to the release, and it becomes more stable, and it will become more stable. Uh, so you need to know that. So if you are thinking of jumping in, trying out 
uh, one of these beta operating systems, you know, I would strongly recommend that you not do it on your main device. You know, if you think about the, the iPhone that you carry in your pocket and depend on every day, uh, that's not the kind of device that you probably want to put the beta version of iOS 13 on because, again, you might have some major trouble with your day-to-day -day usage of it. Things that you rely on may not work. Um, so that's really the main thing. There may be some feature that you're looking forward to in the new version of iOS or iPadOS or tvOS that, you, that isn't even ready, that Apple hasn't even put into the beta or unlocked it yet. So, you know, those are the things to consider. So, is it ever a good time to join the beta? Well, uh, certainly if you're a developer, you're going to want to have a device in there. But for us normal people who aren't developers, um, you know, the, the further along in the beta release schedule that we go, as we get closer and closer to the release of that Golden Master final ready-to-ship product, um, the betas do get more and more stable. And so, you know, it, if you wanted to wait a month, you know, six weeks, two months, you know, the longer you wait, the more stable the version of, say, iOS 13 or iPadOS or tvOS or macOS that you install is going to be. So that's really a consideration, you know. How, how inconvenient do you want to be this early in the game just to be able to take advantage of new features? So let's say you are ready to do that. Well, how do you do it? Well, uh, it used to be that you could you could only do it if you were a developer, and anybody could become a developer, but it was a $99 per year fee to join that. So that's not a trivial sum of money if you just want to get beta versions of the software. Um, but in the last several years, Apple has actually opened up the uh, betas to to anybody that wants to sign up. Um, and they, they, they don't happen at the same time. Developers uh, usually get access to beta software the same day Apple announces them at the keynote. But they don't actually put it into the public beta, usually for a version or two ahead. So it may be two or three to four weeks before there's a public beta out. And it's only this week that Apple has actually made those available. And so you're not getting the very first beta, you're getting the second or third beta, that kind of thing. Um, but you can actually go to beta.apple.com and uh, when you go there, you can actually just click on the, the big blue button right in the middle and then you can put in your Apple ID and password. And then it's gonna basically give you some terms and conditions to, to agree to and you hit agree. And then when you go in there, you're gonna be able to choose what beta software you want because you know if you don't even have an Apple TV, then you don't care about tvOS. Um, but maybe there's just one particular one. Maybe you really wanna put iOS 13 on a device that you have, for example. Well, you can go and do that. And what it does is it downloads a configuration profile to your device that just basically tells your device that it's allowed to be a part of the beta process. And then you just go into uh, to the software update part of iOS or tvOS or whichever uh, beta that you're downloading and you just check for updates and it's going to let you download and install it just like it would um, a, a regular version of iOS. Another thing to be aware of if you jump into these betas is that, you know, the betas, uh, in the early days, it feels like they don't come out fast enough because you want a new version that's more stable. But as the process goes along, if you're in the beta channel, uh, they do put out the updates uh, fairly often. And so that's another thing to think about. If you don't want to be uh, kind of bombarded with multiple requests on multiple Apple devices that you own to be updating them constantly, then you might not want to be in the beta program. But that's how it works. Again, don't do this unless you have a spare device right now that you don't mind putting something that's not ready for prime time on. Don't put it on your main device at this point. That's it for this week's episode of, or, of your Apple update. I'm your host, John Sherrod, and I'll see you next time. I say this week, but hopefully I'll be back with you on Thursday. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, leave me a comment. I'd love to know, are you jumping into one of the betas? Is there a particular feature you're looking forward to? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you and chat with you. Bye.